I played Redfall in 2024, so you don't have to. Redfall was one of my most anticipated games of 2023. The trailers leading up to the release of Redfall had me absolutely hyped. Yes, I'm aware the whole point of game trailers is to make the game look as good as possible, but even the trailers for the Suicide Squad game didn't get me hyped. We all know how that game turned out. But sometimes, marketing does a real good job at hiding all of the lackluster stuff underneath. Redfall had a great concept. You and your squad were all about hunting vampires and trying to save your town. It seemed like it was going to be another home run for Arcane Studios. It was a game that I was super excited to play. It had the signature Arcane look, mostly the characters with weirdly large hands, and I felt like the story could go so many ways. Why did these vampires come to this town? What's the end goal? What's the lore behind the big baddies of the game? But as the game came closer to release, we got some less than stellar news. The game would be locked at 30 FPS on launch. Now, not launching a game with a performance mode off rip can turn some people off. I can usually look the other way so long as everything else in the game is well made. Starfield, for example, was locked at 30 FPS at launch. But I find Starfield to be interesting enough and ambitious enough that I was able to look the other way. Would I prefer a performance mode at launch? Of course, but it's not a make or break thing sort of thing for me. 30 FPS annoys me for like 20 minutes until my brain finally adjusts and then I end up okay. But the 30 FPS thing is only a case by case thing for me. In Redfall's case, it being locked at 30 FPS didn't make any sense. The game is not super graphically intense. I mean, it looks nice, but graphically speaking, it's not hyper realistic. It's not a super large game in scope. So this decision made a lot of people think that this game would not launch in a very good state, and, well, they were right. But as Arcane Austin put more time into Redfall, is it finally worth playing in 2024? Did Arcane make meaningful changes to this game? I booted up Redfall and tried to find out. Let it be known that I actually beat Redfall already, so this footage is actually captured on New Game Plus, so my weapons and stats from the first playthrough carried over, but the story reset meaning I restarted from the beginning once more. First thing I did was turn off motion blur, which I don't know why any game ever has this on by default. I feel like 90% of people who know anything about video games hate motion blur. I suppose it has select instances where it makes sense, like in story-driven single-player games, but Redfall is not that. I also made sure to enable performance mode, so I can get off the dreaded 30 FPS and actually have a smooth experience. My character awoke after the first cutscene on a boat, and I immediately just started to run through the level. Leaving the boat, and I was fighting a few cultists. Your main enemies of the game are vampires, cultists, and bellwether operators. Basically mercenaries, at least I think so. I couldn't really be bothered to look into it too much. The cultists are basically brainwashed into thinking that the vampire overlords are their saviors or something. That really doesn't matter. All you need to know is enemy with gun needs to die. The enemy AI in this game is still pretty damn bad. Sometimes they don't notice you all that well, and they lack any meaningful scripting. And for the most part, they stay pretty still when fighting you. Like, they might move around a little bit, but they don't really often try to find cover. They definitely don't have any tactics like flanking in their abilities. The only times you're really going to have a difficult time is when you're on a higher difficulty level, or there's very large groups of them. They really just aren't that bright. Which was the case at launch too, so I guess Arcane didn't really make any changes to the AI, and if they did, it didn't do too much at all. You fight your way through a couple of enemies and find yourself at the fire station. You'll kill some more enemies inside, turn on the power, and you're greeted with a cutscene. If you can even really call it that. Aside from like one or two actually rendered cutscenes, you get something similar to what COD Zombies has done before, where a cutscene is mostly static images with voiceovers on top of them. It's not very immersive. I find myself skipping pretty much all of these because the story is fucking shit. I was not invested in it at all. I wasn't even invested when I beat the game, and I certainly am not now. There's also a bunch of papers you can find throughout the map, which would build the world a little bit, but then again, I didn't care about these enough to even read them. I'm sure there's story there, but it was so poorly executed that I found myself not caring for any of these cutscenes or any of these notes or journals. My investment in the story was pretty much, guys with guns are bad, vampires are also bad, shoot them all. 
There is a couple missions that I actually felt myself intrigued with, mainly the dollhouse one towards the end of the first map. But aside from one or two missions, I really didn't care at all. But back to the game at hand. After you clear out the fire station, you now have access to this as the main hub area. You can find some supplies in here like medkits, weapons, and other assortments, but aside from buying ammo or medkits, the items you usually find really aren't that great in this main hub area. From here you can now select from different missions to do. You have more than one option at the start, and I'm pretty sure eventually you're going to have to do most of them to actually progress the story, but I don't think you have to do them all, but if you're a completionist you probably will. Most of them are pretty easy, go here, kill these things, pick up this item, which I guess most games are that if you really boil it down to bare bones, but if the story's good I can really look past basic missions. But the story here is so uninteresting that I would just select a mission and run through it as fast as I possibly could without thinking. It was about the time of getting my first mission that I thought that this game was getting a little bit too easy for me, so I upped the difficulty by one, which didn't change the AI in the slightest. They're still dumb as rocks, they just kill you a lot quicker. On the regular difficulty, I found it pretty hard to die, but going up by one just meant I would die in one two shots from a sniper or shotgun, and I'd maybe survive a couple swipes from vamps. Speaking of the vamps, there are a few variations. All the vampires have some sort of teleportability or fast travel mechanic, but some are more powerful than others. Like there's a siphon vampire that will just constantly drain your health if it locks onto you, and you need to break its line of sight to not die. But on the higher difficulties, it just rips through you. Maybe my gear wasn't good enough, maybe I just suck, but I felt like some of the special vamps could definitely rinse you way too easily. I guess it could be good for a challenge, but it felt unfair at times. Again, not an issue on the lower difficulties, but the higher ones, surviving is definitely more of an issue. Who would have thought? One of the other special vamps puts like a dome around you, and it makes it hard to see outside of a certain range. Not difficult, but it's certainly different. Outside of story missions, your main goal of Redfall is getting better gear. Akin to Borderlands, the longer you play, the better stuff you get. So you end up using weapons that you may not want to, just because the stats are better. Like, I have a shotgun, which is absurdly slow to reload, but when I stake a vampire with it, I get some health. So I feel like it's beneficial for me to basically always have it equipped. Even if I have a shotgun which does more damage. I don't hate the concept of these things, it's designed to move you out of your comfort zone by making you use weapons you normally wouldn't, but regardless. The gunplay in Redfall is decent enough as it is, I mean, the guns don't feel bad by any stretch, but they lack any real punch or kick to them. It's fine for what it is, but you're not going to get next level gunplay out of this. Like, Call of Duty usually does gunplay really well, gunplay in Redfall is fine, it's serviceable, but again, Nothing that's going to really blow you away here. It's just another addition to the game that is just mediocre. Par for the course for this game, I suppose, right? After you play for like 30 minutes, you've pretty much seen all the AI can do, which is not much. But in large numbers and higher difficulties, it can be engaging enough. I actually like the map of Redfall. There's actually two maps, but most people probably didn't make it to the second one. But I found both of them interesting in terms of layout and locations. The main issue is they're pretty barren. Not in terms of like actual building structures, but in the sense of you can't really go into a lot of them. There is so many buildings that you cannot access in either map of Redfall. So many doors that are blocked off to where you just can't even explore. It feels like for every 10 to 15 buildings you come across, you can actually only go in like one or two of them. But that's a double-edged sword, I suppose. Because in this case, you can't explore like you would think you could. You know, in a looter shooter, you think you'd have a better opportunity to explore and find some cool spots to get better gear, but no. A select few buildings and caves have things to do, but on the other hand, if you could go in every single building, odds are is that most of them really wouldn't have anything in them, rendering exploring useless. Just give me access to more things to look through with the possibility of cooler loot. I feel like that's not too much to ask for. Around the map, you'll find some safe houses, which once unlocked, unlock some more quests for you to do. You go do one objective, and then you're able to take on the other boss, or whatever they call it here. Basically, just another vampire to kill. Once done, you'll get their skull, and the neighborhood is now marked as safe. Not safe in the sense of no enemies will spawn, but safe in the sense of you've done two objectives, so hooray. Honestly, the coolest thing that this game has going for it is the vampire-ness. 
which will only start spawning after you progress through the story enough. Spoiler, I didn't get that far in this playthrough because I got extremely bored. But the vamp nests are genuinely fun to go through. You'll enter these glowing blue doors and you'll be teleported into cool looking areas with different quirks and modifiers to them. During my first playthrough, I found these so interesting and fun to do. You have to make your way through this different hellscape and find a heart and sever its ties, which will start a countdown in which you loot up and escape in a select amount of time. The issue with these is there's like, maybe five different ones? So after going through them a few times, aside from the different modifiers, you start to learn the proper routes you need to take and just start to breeze through them. The nest had so much potential, but like most of this game, it lacked content. The fact that the coolest part of this game is something that I found tedious after a few times is really saddening. Because once these things start to spawn, you'll come across them a lot, and you'll spend a decent chunk of time just taking them out. It went from something cool and fun to do to, I gotta get rid of this other nest before its area of effect spreads. Redfall is definitely a game made with co-op in mind. There's different characters for you to play as, all with unique abilities and skill trees. The more you play, the more upgrades you get, yada yada yada. You can play this game solo, but it's probably better if you have friends to suffer through it with. The issue there is going to be convincing people to play this shit. All in all, Redfall is pretty much the same as it was at launch. A soulless, bland looter shooter with very few redeeming qualities. Its concept is great, the execution not so much. The only meaningful change since launch is the performance mode. Otherwise, I noticed absolutely no difference in how the game functions. AI is still stupid, story is still boring and there's just not enough to do. I compare it to those videos you see on TikTok, where the top is like a podcast or some other clip, and the bottom part is some dumb mobile game. You really need multiple points of stimulation to even bear this game. It's best enjoyed with a podcast or YouTube video playing next to you while you turn your brain off and shoot things. And even then, you'll probably not enjoy your time playing this game. And that's quite literally how I beat this game the first time. I would have the game volume super low and you would just toss up a video on my computer next to my monitor and play it like that. It's not a very engaging game. The AI is dumb, the story is dumb, there's nothing new here. It's not worth your time, and I wish I was singing a different tune here. Because I really wanted to love this game. But I don't. Arcane dropped a ball pretty damn hard, and it seems like this game deserves to be like the vampires themselves. Somewhere where it doesn't see the sun. Have you played Redfall? Did you have a sliver of fun playing it? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thanks for sticking around, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheerio, mates.